acceptable. My job today is to talk to you about options of treatment when we have a local recurrence, meaning recurrence after initial therapy, and I'll get into some more definitions here in a second. Uh, I don't have any relevant disclosures for this particular presentation. Uh, for definitive treatment, what I mean by that is a treatment that, that was done aiming for cure. And these are treatments that Dr. Shuck mentioned earlier, such as ablation therapy, which could be with cryotherapy or radiofrequency or microwave, or with surgery, which could be either open or laparoscopic or robotic. And it could be a partial nephrectomy where we save part of the kidney or a radical nephrectomy where we take the entire kidney out. So this is what I mean for this purpose of this talk, definitive treatment. And to define an isolated local recurrence, I'm going to use the following uh, definition. So it's the recurrence of a cancer that we already treated. It's a cancer that we treated with the intention to cure, but something happened and it, it recurred again. And the location is in the retroperitoneum, which uh, uh, Dr. Spies just mentioned to you where that location is. So it's basically deep in the abdominal area, close to the major blood vessels like the aorta and the vena cava. And it could be in the kidney itself. It could be where the kidney used to be if we've already removed the kidney. It could be in the lymph nodes close to the kidney or in the adrenal gland, which is a tiny gland that we have on top of each of our kidneys. And generally when we talk about local recurrence only or an isolated local recurrence, it means there is only recurrence in this retroperitoneal area, but nothing elsewhere. So no bone metastases or liver or lung metastases. The question is, how often does this happen? With ablation therapy, generally, if the patients are selected well, it should be less than 10%. With partial nephrectomy, it should be less than 5%. And with radical nephrectomy, it should be less than 3%. Again, this is an isolated local recurrence. So thankfully, this is a rare event, as you could see here. And that's why most of the manuscript I will discuss are small series of small number of patients, and they're not that many patients, which uh, is a good thing. The question is, how do we actually find this local recurrence? And there's two main ways to find it, either by routine imaging. So let's say you're going to see your doctor every six months or every year. Something shows up. That's one way to diagnose it. In general, these tumors would be asymptomatic, meaning you don't feel anything. It just shows up on the images. Or the other way would be if there are symptoms. So if a patient has you know, new pain that was never there before, and they feel that in the area of the surgery, if there's bleeding that wasn't present, if the patient suddenly is feeling tired and they were doing just fine before that, or if the patient's having unexplained weight loss, uh, or the patient's feeling a mass now somewhere in the abdomen. These are signs that you should bring up to your doctor immediately just to make sure that they're not related to the cancer that was treated in the past. And the possible scenarios in this situation are two. So you can either have an isolated local recurrence, so just a recurrence in the area of the initial procedure and nothing else, and this is the best case scenario. Or you could have a recurrence in that area plus a metastasis, such as in the lung or bone or liver, and this is a less favorable situation at that point. And the options are many. So the treatment options we're gonna go through here are really the same as treating a patient that has never had treatment before. So we can do observation or active surveillance, we can do ablation, we can do surgery, Radiation is an option as well, and systemic therapy. And I'll go through each one of these as far as the uh, individual patient approach. So let's look at the guidelines. There are the American Urological Association guidelines, the European guidelines, and the National Comprehensive Cancer Network guidelines. And none of these guidelines really tell us what we should do when we find an isolated local recurrence. And the reason is it's a quite a rare phenomenon, and there aren't large studies to really guide us. So it's a very individualized approach that we have to work with with each of our patients. So there are no general guidelines in this uh, type of setting. So after we find the local recurrence, we need to make sure if the patient has a metastasis or not. So we can't just look at the CT of the abdomen and go for surgery. We have to do a thorough workup. At least we have to look at the chest with a CT of the chest. We have to personally review the MRI or the CT of the abdomen. And if indicated, we should do an MRI of the brain or a bone scan, among other studies, to make sure there isn't any cancer anywhere else. If the suspected recurrence is very, very small, there's nothing wrong with just waiting and repeating the imaging in two or three months. It could still be healing from the surgery, for example. Uh, it could be just a, a small amount of blood that's going to disappear if we wait a few months. So waiting if the suspected recurrence is very small is okay to do so. 
And a biopsy can be done sometimes if it's clinically indicated, meaning if it's not sure what it is, if it doesn't look like a typical recurrence, it's okay to do a biopsy, but it's not mandatory in this setting. And the decision on how we treat our patient is very individualized, and there's two main categories of factors we look at. The first one is the patient factor, and like Dr. Spies was mentioning, you know, age is very important, the performance status, meaning is the patient able to perform activities of daily living, or if the patient in a wheelchair or bedbound, these will guide us to different therapies for different patients. How is the kidney function? Does the patient have comorbidities, you know, strokes or high blood pressure or heart attacks and things like that in the past? Does the patient have other cancers that are active? And that's something we see in our uh, hospital because patients sometimes have more than one cancer as well. And also to have a frank discussion with the patient about what their wishes are and what they expect from their treatment. We have to be realistic when we discuss things with our patient uh, and we have to understand and listen to what our patients want and expect from their treatment. If they expect to be cured and we cannot offer cure, we have to be honest about it. If they expect palliation, meaning just to feel better, and that's something we could offer potentially, that's something that we can do for our patients. So we have to have a frank conversation whenever we discuss a local recurrence treatment. And of course, we have to keep in mind the tumor factors, such as the size of the tumor, the location of the tumor, how fast the tumor is growing, and the results of the biopsy, if we have the biopsy result. This is the brief outline of what I'm gonna go through as far as the frequency of follow-up, and that's very highly debated because we don't have one guideline that we can follow as much as how often do you see your doctor. And I'm sure if I ask you in the room here, how often do you see your doctor for follow-up, everybody will say something different. And that's normal, and that's to be expected, actually. And I'll discuss the recurrence after three major types of treatment, the ablation, the partial nephrectomy, and the radical nephrectomy. So follow-up frequency, these are things that we have to do, such as history and physical. It's not all about imaging, so we have to actually talk to our patient, we have to listen to our patient, we have to examine our patient. Blood work has to be done. Uh, imaging of the chest because that's the most common place for the cancer to go to outside of the kidney and abdominal imaging of course. I'm going to focus only on the abdominal imaging for this part because that's what I'm assigned to do as far as the local recurrence. So this is what we, um, what the National Cancer uh, Comprehensive Cancer Network guidelines say for ablation and these are generally for stage 1a tumor meaning tumor less than 4 centimeter. So in general they recommend abdominal imaging with either a CT or MRI about three to six months after the ablation and then yearly after that for up to five years. These are low aggressive tumors in general. As far as follow-up after surgery for stage one, and this could be partial nephrectomy or radical nephrectomy, and as you can tell here, there is a difference between the partial and the radical because with the partial, we still have remainder of the kidney to look at as well to make sure the cancer doesn't recur in that same kidney that we operated on. And you could see here the follow-up is initially about three to 12 months after the operation, and then yearly for three years afterwards for the partial. And for the radical, it's three to 12 months after the initial surgery, and then afterwards it's, it's per clinician discretion. And this is only for stage one that I'm showing here. Now for stage two and three, which have a higher chance of recurrence, this is what the guidelines recommend, three to six months after the operation, and then every three to six months for three years, and then yearly for a couple more years, and then per discretion of the clinician and the patient. And again, you will see different guidelines saying something differently. There's no one right way to do it. So what about recurrence after ablation therapy? This is a patient, a 60-year-old gentleman that had um, a few comorbidities. So uh, their, doctor, their doctors basically decided to do ablation. However, after the ablation was done, several months later, he had a recurrence. It was observed for a little while, kept on growing. So the patient then came to our hospital for uh, additional care. You could see this is how a normal kidney will look like. This is the kidney that has the tumor over here, and I'll show you what happened uh, at the end of this part. So in general, ablation recurrences are quite rare, and they are rare because now we have learned which patients we should do ablation for and which patients don't need ablation because our success rate will be not good. So the recurrence rate should be really less than 5 to 10%, and that's what we discussed with our patients. And when we do have a recurrence after ablation, it's all the options are available. So we can either observe, we can do ablation again, or we can do surgery. And it all really depends on what the initial tumor was, what is the size of the tumor right now after recurrence, and what is the performance status of the patient and how healthy the patient is, and how aggressive does the patient want us to pursue the tumor.
This is from the National Cancer Institute, and they have great experience with very uh, aggressive tumors, such as VHL tumors that are uh, multiple. Um, as you can see here, a small number of studies, and this is going to be a recurrent theme, only 13 uh, patients uh, were treated, all had a partial nephrectomy after failure of ablation therapy. Multiple tumors were removed from the kidney, and this is typical for uh, our patients with VHL. Surgery is a long operation for this patient group, it was about eight hours, with a, a, you know, a reasonably high uh, blood loss. Uh, for patients who don't have genetic syndromes, usually we have to deal with one or two tumors uh, that recur. This is from our colleagues at the Cleveland Clinic. They looked at 27 patients. Uh, nine had ablation failure and 18 had cryoablation failure. Uh, and you can see here that patients were treated differently. Not everybody got the same treatment. So 14 patients had a partial, 12 had radical, and one had a surgery that was aborted. And it's important to know why this patient had an aborted surgery. It's because the discussion between the surgeons at the Cleveland Clinic and this patient before the operation was, you have one kidney, you have a recurrence in that kidney. If I cannot remove this recurrence with an operation, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to take the entire kidney and you'll be on dialysis, or you want me to stop the surgery? And the wishes of the patient were, I don't want to be on dialysis. If you cannot remove the tumor, leave it there. And that's why it's important to have these discussions before an operation and not have to come talk to the patient's family during the surgery and try to assume that the patient's family knows what the patient would want. So you have to be very upfront when we're talking with our patients with these uh, operations. Uh, the tumor sizes are small. The blood loss is you know, within the acceptable uh, limits. Uh, the complication rates are higher when we're doing operation the second time, and that's normal because the first time a surgery is done, our body's healed by forming scar tissue. So when we go back again to do another operation, we have to fight with the scar tissue, and that increases the complication uh, rates when we're doing the treatments for our patients. And as you can see here, the recurrences were actually uh, very good as far as the number were very low. So only 8% of patients had a recurrence. And you have to keep in mind that here we're treating a recurrence from a small tumor that originally took place. So if you had a very small tumor initially and you had treatment and you had a recurrence, most of the time the recurrence will not be very aggressive. But of course, each patient uh, will have an individual uh, case scenario. This is uh, our experience. We looked at 14 patients. Again, another small study. Uh, 10 had ablation failure from radiofrequency and four had cryoablation failure. And you see the same theme here that most of the rescue or uh, surgeries were done about two years after the original operation. So this is a very recurrent theme that most of the secondary operations happen about one and a half years to two and a half years after the original operation. Uh, most of these patients had a partial nephrectomy and the rest had radical nephrectomy. The age of surgery was about 65 years, which is the expected age. Surgery in general takes longer when we're doing it the second time around. And the tumor size is still small. It's still about three centimeters, so just a little over an inch. And we did have uh, major complications in four patients, uh, but fortu fortunately all the patients recovered from these uh, complications. And one recurrence only was noted, and this is an in a patient with VHL, again, which is not an uncommon scenario. This is the patient that I uh, showed you earlier. Uh, we did an open partial nephrectomy for this patient, and the good news is that, you know, we really, no bridges were burned, I would say, because this still was a stage one tumor. Of course, we would have preferred to do the operation for the first time and be done with it and not have to subject the patient to another procedure, but um, this is what happened with this patient, and ultimately was found to have a low-grade, low-stage tumor with clean margins, and the patient currently is doing uh, well after the operation. So the first part was recurrence after the ablation therapy. This part will be recurrence after a partial nephrectomy. So part of the kidney is still there, and let's see what happens with these uh, patients. This is a 79-year-old gentleman who had an open partial nephrectomy at another hospital, and then after follow-up was found to have a recurrent tumor. This is normal kidney down here, and this is the tumor over here, and the tumor was noted to go to the renal vein as well, and you've heard a lecture on that earlier today. And I'll show you what we did for this patient later on. Again, thankfully, the local recurrence rate after a partial nephrectomy, if done appropriately, should be low. It should be less than 5%. And the location could be either in the kidney itself that we've already operated on. It could be in the same location where the tumor was removed, or it could be in another location of the same kidney, or it could be around the kidney, which is something I will discuss uh, a little bit later. Uh, this is the Mayo Clinic experience, and these patients basically had an initial partial nephrectomy. They had a recurrence, 
And the way these patients were salvaged as far as treating their recurrence is by doing an ablation procedure. So as you can see, we can, if we have failure of ablation, we can rescue by an par uh, operation, partial nephrectomy, and vice versa. Sometimes we have failure of the partial nephrectomy surgery, and we can rescue that with either an operation, such as partial nephrectomy or radical nephrectomy, or with ablation. So the key, as Dr. Shuck mentioned earlier today, is not to have one tool when you're treating your patient. You have to have a whole bunch of tools, and you have to use each tool differently for each patient condition. So it's important when you're getting treatment to go to a location that can offer multiple options, not just one option. And this is the outcomes from the Mayo Clinic study. As you can see, small number, a small size of tumor, major complication rate is actually very low and uh, with an acceptable limit. The uh, recurrence rate is acceptable, it's about 9%. So we can successfully rescue patients after failed partial nephrectomy with another procedure. This is from the NCI group, again, showing you that these patients, uh, generally the patients that are treated in the NCI have uh, VHL or other syndromes. So the surgeries are usually longer. They're much more complicated surgeries because these patients have multiple operations and have much more complicated clinical course. The major complication rate here is close to 20%. And the follow-up time at about five years, the 20% of patients had another recurrence that needed another uh, procedure. Uh, this is our experience that we just published this year. These are 44 patients who had a local recurrence after partial nephrectomy. And as you can see here, the stages at the initial partial nephrectomy, as expected, about two-thirds of the patients had stage one cancers. And most patients had the clear cell type. And these are the types of curves you've been seeing all day. They were called the Kaplan-Meier curves. Usually the lower the curve is, the worse the outcome. So the upper curves are patients who do better. The lower curve is the patient who doesn't do as well. So what we found, and all these make clinical sense, if you have a positive margin when you do a partial nephrectomy, you have a higher rate of recurrence, and that makes sense. If you leave tumor behind, the tumor is more likely to come back. Similarly, if you had a more complicated tumor, meaning larger, deeper tumor, you have a higher rate of recurrence. If you have more than one tumor, it makes the surgery more complicated, so you have a higher rate of recurrence. And if you have a higher stage tumor, of course, the risk of recurrence in that same kidney becomes higher. And if you have a solitary kidney, we're trying to do our best to save that kidney and prevent dialysis. So we do much more aggressive surgeries on tumors that otherwise we would have removed the entire kidney. So the rate of recurrence really becomes higher. And when we look at all these factors together in multivariable analysis, just putting them all together in the same mathematical formula, all these were significantly associated with an increased risk of recurrence after a partial nephrectomy. And as you can see, again, the time between the actual surgery, the initial one, and the recurrence is about two years. And this is kind of a rough average of when we see these recurrences. But of course, there's a range of these recurrences. They don't all happen at the same time, but this is the average time when, they, when we do see them. And again, you see that these patients had multiple different types of surgeries. Again, to show you that we have to look at each patient individually and offer what we think is the best treatment for this particular patient. And um, the surgeries are still a little bit more complicated, about two and a half hours of surgery. Blood loss is a little bit more. And the pathology, as you could tell here, most of these patients were uh, T1, which is a low stage tumor, but we did see uh, stage three tumors, either T3A or T3B in this patient. So again, the pathology will vary in these patients. This patient uh, that I showed you earlier underwent a radical nephrectomy, meaning the entire kidney was removed and the patient's currently doing well about three years after the original surgery. So again, these surgeries are doable, but they're more complicated, and the patients need to be made aware of that fact so that they can be ready for the operation and the post-operative course as well. And finally, the recurrence after radical nephrectomy. Uh, this is a patient that had surgery uh, at another hospital. They, the patient had the hand-assisted laparoscopic nephrectomy. Uh, the left kidney is gone, but you see a little bit of tumor here close to the spleen. You see some tumor here close to the artery, back on the, on the musculature in the back, and basically a lot of tumors where the kidney used to be. And this is a recurrence that we see after radical nephrectomy. Again, the good news is that this is uncommon, so we don't see this very often. And this is one of the earlier studies that looked at this. This is from uh, California. Just looking at 11 patients, uh, there was two post-operative deaths. Uh, two patients actually died of cancer within two years of the operation. The, the reason I'm showing you this is that 
we've made a lot of progress as a community of urologists and medical oncologists over the years in treating uh, our patients with a local recurrence. So now the outcomes are much better. This is uh, also from about 20 years ago, 16 patients and 15 patients had a complete resection and six patients were actually free of cancer without any additional therapy. This is from over 20 years ago. This is from our Mayo Clinic colleagues. Again, these are graphs similar to what Dr. Spies just showed you that if you do have surgery for a local recurrence, you do better than if you don't have any surgery. But you always have to keep in mind that a lot of selection has gone into this type of treatment. We can't operate on everybody who comes in with a local recurrence, so we have to pick which patients we think are gonna benefit the most from this type of aggressive surgery. This is our experience that we published a couple of years ago, and uh, Dr. Spies mentioned some of these uh, data already. Again, this is an experience of about 25 years, and we only had 102 patients. So this is a rare phenomenon, and that's why when somebody's getting treatment for this type of situation, it's important to get it done at a tertiary referral center. And it's something I'll mention in my conclusion slide as well. Most of the patients had surgery done at other institutions, but about 16% uh, were done at our own institution, and then they had a recurrence. Uh, the time, again, from the initial surgery to the recurrence was about a year and a half, and it's a little bit shorter because generally the patients who had radical nephrectomy had more aggressive tumors, higher stage tumors, so the rec recurrences will happen a little bit earlier than uh, those for a smaller and less aggressive tumors. And, you know, typical um, study group as far as the age was about 55 years, so on the younger side, most of the patients had an original surgery that was done in an open fashion. As expected, most patients have high-stage tumors, so aggressive tumors. About 20% actually have positive lymph nodes at that time, and about 13% had positive margins at the original operation. As you can see here, the areas of recurrence can vary, but all of these are considered to be local recurrence. So it could be either where the kidney used to live, we call that the renal fossa, it could, or it could be the lymph nodes around the kidney, or the adrenal gland if it was left behind. And we do leave the adrenal gland behind on purpose in most of our patients if it's not involved. So it's not wrong to leave the adrenal gland on the same side. And as you can see here, about half the patients had symptoms. So these were not detected by imaging. These were detected because, because the patient complained of something and they went to their doctor and they had an evaluation that showed what the problem was. The recurrences are a little bit on the larger side here. It's about close to two inches. We performed open surgery in the vast majority of these patients. We had about 15% uh, complication rate. So these are serious operations with a serious blood loss as well. And the surgery takes about three and a half hours or so on average with a hospital stay of about a week. And this is an important point that we discuss with all of our patients right now. So about 60% of the patients that we operated on had a relapse after the operation. But the good thing is that the time for that second relapse was about two years later. And the survival from that time was about five and a half years. So just because a patient has a recurrence, it doesn't mean that that's the end of it. There's still patients that we can salvage with surgery and with medical therapy as well. And these are the predictors of the patients who will do worse after the local recurrence surgery. Basically patients with positive lymph nodes at the time of the original operation and patients with a larger size of the recurrence. And that's why it's important to detect the recurrence when it's more on the smaller size and not basically a very large recurrence that it becomes very hard to treat and to cure the patient from. And um, these are uh, some studies as well that you know, Dr. Spies and colleagues have uh, worked very hard to put together, but 50 patients from four major centers. Again, these are patients who had an isolated lymph node recurrence close to the kidney area. And you can do surgery as well in this situation, but about half the patients will have a recurrence. Again, we can potentially cure about 40 to 50% of patients who have an isolated recurrence after an aggressive initial surgery. And just for the sake of time, I'm gonna talk about the recurrence of an IVC thrombus. And this is a very, very difficult situation. And our colleagues at the Mayo Clinic looked at this. And unfortunately, all the patients that had this recurrence and had surgery did not survive past a year. Again, indicating a very aggressive recurrence that surgery has limited benefit uh, in this situation. Uh, there are some small reports about doing radiation after recurrence of a thrombus, and our colleagues at UT Southwestern in Dallas have worked on this, and they have an ongoing clinical trial for this as well. And this is what we did for this patient. So this is basically a surgery that we do with colleagues from other surgical specialties, such as surgical oncologists. So we had to remove all of these things in order to remove all the 
tumors that were sprinkled after the initial surgery. And this patient's currently doing well at about two years after the operation. And again, this is not a one-person surgery. This is a surgery that we have to collaborate with other surgeons in our uh, hospital in order to make sure that we can do a complete operation to remove all the tumors that we can see in the safest way possible. So take-home messages. The good news is that local recurrences are rare, but they definitely can happen. We should do surgical resection in patients who have a good performance status. And for the outcomes as far as recurrences after ablation or partial nephrectomy are good. So most of these patients can be cured if uh, we do surgery after the ablation or partial nephrectomy failure. If we have a recurrence after radical nephrectomy, these are generally more aggressive tumors. So potentially we can cure about 40% of uh, our patients in this fashion. It's very important to follow up with your doctor after the initial procedure. It's not, you know, you have a surgery and then that's it. If there is cancer on the pathology, follow-up is mandatory afterwards. And the best outcomes for a patient to have a local recurrence are in patients who have low comorbidities, meaning they're generally healthy, they have a good performance status. The best outcomes are in those patients who don't have distant metastatic disease, meaning it's only an isolated local recurrence. And the later the recurrence occurs, the better the outcome is. As you can imagine, if you have a recurrence three months after the initial surgery, that's usually a very aggressive tumor that's hard to cure. But if the recurrence happens one or two or five years after surgery, generally these are recurrences that have a better prognosis. And it's very important to have this type of treatment for a local recurrence done at a tertiary center, a center that has a lot of experience, a center that has a lot of different uh, ways to treat the tumor, not just with surgery, but maybe with ablation, with medical therapy, and a lot of disciplines that will work together to try to find the best outcomes for the patients. Thank you for your attention.